Hey guys, do you ever just max out three times a day and after you max your snatch and clean and jerk, you also max your front squat? Do you guys ever do that? Well, if you did, you'd be probably doing some of the Bulgarian style training. That term, Bulgarian training, is again, a bit of a misnomer. We like to talk about misnomers here on this channel. The reason it is, is because truly the Bulgarian system of training not many, if any, people are doing. Usually you would have to, in order to call it Bulgarian training, you would need one man and one man only, and that is Ivan Abijayev. Now, uh, Max Ada trained with Ivan Abijayev and actually did uh, that Bulgarian system. And he has a video on this. You guys all need to watch it. Uh, and it really puts forward the blunt idea of Bulgarian training. For a while there, that term Bulgarian was being thrown around in the powerlifting world and just regular strength and conditioning. And I think what that meant was just like higher frequency, low rep, and uh, heavy lifting. You know, it still wasn't even close to the Bulgarian training. You guys should watch this and get motivated, as I did when I first watched it. As a weightlifter, you really shouldn't train like this very often. Honestly, like 95% of the time, you should not be training like this. If you do train like this, it's only a fraction of what these guys end up actually doing. However, sometimes you got to let the ego fly a little bit. You know, very rarely though, you got to go and you got to grit your teeth and you got to <clears throat> lift heavy because that's what this sport is. It's a display of one rep. And uh, these guys do that year round. They go so hard. There was a ton of drug use, and Ivan Ebejev, the coach, was not afraid to talk about this drug use. I did a video about Matt Fraser on the Joe Rogan podcast. Definitely check this video out. But in it, I talk about a lifter called Valentin Hristov, who was recruited by Abijayev when he was like 18 years old uh, because he had snatched 160 and clean and jerked, I think, around 180-something, um, was recruited by... Ivan Abijayev started taking a metric <laughs> ton of drugs. And it, it, I think in like 12 weeks, his snatch went up to like 180 and his clean and jerk went right into the 220s, something ridiculous like that. They just rinsed and repeated until he did over 200 in the snatch and 250 in the clean and jerk. In the meantime, he was uh, peeing a cola colored pee and he was seeing spots. So that's the type of D-ball use that we're actually talking about here. Anyways, enough of that. Let's get down to business to defeat the Huns. <laughs> okay. All right, let's go. So this first lifter, uh, his name is Zlatan Vanev, and he's probably one of the most notorious psychopaths on the Bulgarian team. He trains like a crazy person, as you will see right now displayed so he takes the jump from 120 to 150 not that crazy actually uh for you know lifters who are in shape i would suspect a lot of these guys go from 120 to 170 so and here's another thing randy strassen is the guy who filmed this randy strassen is the creator of iron mind they do a lot of arm lifting so that's like grip training uh but iron mind is a YouTube goldmine. Go there after watching this and you will go down the finest rabbit hole you could ever go down of watching weightlifting training. I can't praise Randy Strassen enough for taking a VHS camcorder and a tripod to these events and filming because God damn it, are they exciting and God damn it, are they motivating? Uh, but he continually calls the wrong number on these lifts. So like, we just did 150, and now you can see the fives, the two and a halves, and the two and a half kilo clips. So that's 170, but he calls it 160. And yeah, let's go on. So again, one, 150 to 170, nothing that crazy for a guy in this shape. So that's 170, right? This is so look, okay. So he, he calls this 180. Randy calls this 180. If we have 150, 
with, with the one set of yellows, we add in another yellow, that's 30 more kilos, that's 180, plus the two and a half, plus the two and a half kilo plate, or two and a half kilo collar. So this is 190. 170 to two, 190, pretty, pretty baller jump. I think he absolutely flatlines this lift though. And you can see he, the bar is lined up closer to his toes. Uh, you know, he really yanks when he pulls this bar off the floor. Chest comes up and he's just pushing through his toes as hard as he can. So much speed, so much speed. And aggression. It's mainly aggression. Like, it's... Obviously, he's fast, but he just turns it on. Okay. So now he calls it 200 when it's 210, right? Am I taking crazy pills, Randy? Am I taking crazy pills? I feel like Mugatu, when he says Derek Zoolander, only has one look. This is, is 180 plus... Now, the greens, which are 10 kilo plates which would make it 200 plus the two and a half and the two and a half kilo collar, making that 210. Please, I, I, this is 210. So the reason I bring this up is because Randy keeps calling his finishing weight, which you guys are gonna see, 210, but this is 210. I think at the time, this, his body weight's probably right around 80 to 85. I mean, that's a huge window right there, but. Some of you probably will know more. Again, the barbell's closer to the toes here and he just goes vertical. There's not much technically to grasp here because if, so let me pause it real quick. There's not much technically to grasp from that because it's like, it's so individual, right? Like if you out there were about to say, okay, I'm gonna put the bar closer to my toes and I'm just gonna pull my chest up as hard as I can. It's likely that you will be deficient somewhere, right? This is why I made the You Are Not Lou video, the You Are Not Klokov video, because you cannot replicate what these guys do because you're not replicating what these guys do. There are certain aspects that you can say, Okay, the aggression, the turnover, maybe certain points. Like if you're struggling and the bar's closer to your shin, maybe bring it out closer to, the, to your toe. That might help you. However, your training is your training. So now, this is where Randy calls this 210. But I swear to God, it looks like there is a five kilo, two and a half kilo, and then a collar on the outside of 200 kilos. That would make this 220. Okay, is this 220? So here we go, first attempt at 220. You would assume that one would only take one attempt at this, but yet I am saying first attempt because this man is a psychopath. Zlatan Vanev, what you guys are about to see is the most gritty, grimy training session ever. Guy cleans it easily every time. To be honest, I think that the oscillation of the barbell continually messes with him on this. So this is a 69 kilo lifter taking a crack at 202 kilos. And these guys just pace around in a quiet room. No music. Just a bunch of, you know, Adidas track suits watching, looking on. Shirtless training too. You know, you got the shirt, shirt off and the pants. It is a tremendous look. Yeah, so that's just an insane lift right there. So we have 205 and another lifter. I'm not sure who this lifter is. Again, comment if you know. This guy looks to be about the same weight, weight class as Vanev, maybe a class lighter. Oh, just so aggressive. Like, they're just so reckless. And just, they have such a f you attitude. Boom, 205. Knocked it down. That was a tough, tough lift. Okay, so Randy says 210 again. I'm saying 220. A 220 clean and jerk. What attempt are we on? Are we on three here? That one, he timed up the oscillation a little bit better. 
Um, but and it didn't catch him as much. But okay. Yeah. So that was the second attempt. Now look. Here's his third attempt. Probably the best clean yet. Uh, close again. Again, guys, he's not going to stop. That was his third. Now he's taking his fourth lift. Fourth. People do not do this. Nobody does this. Okay? So this guy sets his hips and just pulls straight from that set position. And he just goes, dang. Boom. Oh, my God. He uh, dislocated his elbow. Dislocated on 205. So if he's doing 210 for reps on his comeback. These guys are crazy. I've heard stories that... The Bulgarians, it's like, okay, if you don't want to be on our weightlifting team where we just put you through hell daily, you can go back and work in the factories and then just die somewhere. So really, these guys, for them, lifting wasn't in, as much about enjoyment as it was like work. Uh, and they didn't have fun. They didn't like training. They would do whatever they could to... Uh, not have to go through what they did. Max was telling me stories about guys that would, you know, I, I, Ivan Abijev would go out of the room, and as he was coming back in, they would pick up the bar and slam it on the ground like they had just done a set, uh, or they'd done an attempt with something heavy, and they would look over and and tell, uh, they would tell Co Coach Abijev, they would say, oh yeah, I just finished that rep, right? They would do whatever they could to not be trained so hard. Uh, but if they didn't follow his orders or whatever, you know, your other pathway was to work in the factories. So here we are, fifth attempt. Still cleaning it like a psycho. Misses that one behind. So, okay, so five attempts at 220. To my knowledge, he's probably hit 220 in training before, maybe, maybe 225. I don't know. A lot of these Bulgarians have done insane <laughs> shit in training that, like, are only stuff of legend. Uh, but to do that five <laughs> times is absolutely ridiculous to think about. This is the part where they move on to front squats, okay? Now, so... Randy says it's 215. I'm sure it is. I don't really know now. I'm not going to calculate and, and do this. Okay, so, guys. Uh, another thing Max said. They would just leave 120 on the bar on the racks. So they would finish their session in the front squat. Okay. They would unrack up to 120 on the barbell and then walk out, lay down, eat, you know, try to take a nap or whatever. They would come back to train and they would immediately front squat 120 cold. And then they would add on probably a red, maybe a red and a yellow and go from there. So to put this in perspective, uh, Vanev does 120, 200, and then 235. That is Bulgarian as fuck. That is how it works. Okay, they are not trying to get any volume. They are simply trying okay. to hit this tiny so little sharp stimulus with with the tiny ass window. Listen, and if they if they ever get outside it, it, they're not doing their jobs. They're not trying to do any volume or anything like that. All right, so we get on to Thursday morning training, and would you look at that shirt? Huh? This is Thursday morning. This is Yorkie Garda. That's 200 kilos. Front squat's 200 kilos. I bet you it's his third rep at most. So this is Gardev. Uh, Randy says he's an 85 kilo lifter. I'm not entirely sure what's on the bar here. It looks like 140 plus the yellows would be 170. Solid technique. Like, I think a lot of times, you know, even myself, I, I talk about how reckless these guys are. 
they just don't give a shit about technique and they just go as hard as they can. But I think before getting put into this system with Abhijayev and before giving be give, being given an inordinate amount of drugs and Dianabol and Deca and all that stuff, uh, they were also very qualified and very athletic gentlemen who had been lifting since youth. So a lot of them do, are, are, I mean, obviously are very technically proficient. Also, this next lifter, not only does he have the coolest outfit, dude, this is, honest to God, this is the only aesthetic weightlifters should have. Straight up. You know, you got to have the Adidas kind of tracksuit pant look. Maybe the zippers are open on the side. Maybe you're shirtless. Maybe you got a big baggy t-shirt that's tucked into your pants, you know, uh, or... Or you wear the training pants that are, com you know, compression pants. Like my man right here. Look at his sick ass outfit. He's got like the hot pink training pants on. Like, you know, training pants. Like something like this. Right? He's got hot pink version of them. Like almost V-neck sports shirt. Those shoes. I have those shoes. I have those. 1996 Adidas's. I got them from, uh... Harry at Capital Strength in Dublin bought him, bought him from him for a hundred uh, euro, which to me was a steal. 96s, they still had the tag in them. I still wear them every once in a while. And that's the thing about these collector shoes. I'm not gonna just sit and let them just stay there. I'm gonna wear the shit out of them. I don't give a shit. So he did end with 185. That's insane for any body weight, for any human on earth. And a guy at 85 kilos body weight, to Randy's knowledge, that's ridiculous. Now, a lot of these guys walk around heavier, obviously, than, than their weight classes that they say they're in. Uh, so, yeah. All right, guys. That's all I'm going to cover on Unbelievable Bulgarians. I hope that was enough. I, if, if you guys want more content kind of like this, let me know in the comments section. Uh, you know, And also, go to Iron Mind because that <laughs> will get you fired up. And it's plenty of content to keep you satisfied, to keep your, you know, your vicious hunger for weightlifting content satisfied. Uh, go out there, maybe max out. Maybe say f*** you to your coach and screw the program and max out three times a day. Don't tell him I told you to. All right, I'll see you guys later.